right, let's just get into it this time. There's a list on Wikipedia called the List of Unusual Deaths, and I'm reading through all of it so I can talk about the ones I find particularly giggle-worthy. In my last video on this topic, I discussed the antiquity era of the list, and for this video, I'm going to be tackling the Middle Ages. I'll meet you at my desk! Cut away! Cut away to me at the desk! Editor, do your damn job and cut away to me at my death. Louis III was the king of France back in the 9th century. Okay, he wasn't actually the king of France. He was the king of West Francia, which eventually became France. And if I can editorialize a bit here, something I never do, he was less of a king and more of a dumbass teenager. Louis III was only about 16 when he was crowned king, and why don't more people stop to think about how absurd it is that so many kings were stupid, inbred delinquents? Oh yeah, there's exceptions every now and then, like Alexander the Great, but history is full of inexperienced and Biters who in the modern era would be more likely to complain about the current show catalog of Disney Plus versus the frustrating conclusion that those motherfuckers to the north who keep invading just won't fuck off and die. Louis III died doing what every hormone-riddled phone junkie would have done without the internet's never-ending flow of titties galore. He died trying to get laid. Around age 19, Louis was chasing after some broad who ran into her father's house so she could scream, Ollie Ollie Oxen Free! Home base! My hymen stays intact, so you better go back! But Louis knew that quality poon was worth chasing for. And while everyone knows that a smile is priceless, Louis probably thought this chick's vertical smile was worth her weight in gold gold, because he decided to hop on a horse and chase after her. And as with every decision driven by a raging boner, this shit ended poorly. While mounting the horse, Louis cracked his head on a nearby doorframe and fractured his skull. Complications from that led to his death. This is why the modern world functions as it does, people. I don't want some lusty acne popper running my political office. Personally, I'll stick with geriatric husks who spend literal weeks trying to understand that the world didn't just stop progressing after the Cold War, and where half of their speeches sound like, and in, in, in America, and you land of the, in the, wanna, good friend of mine, thank you very much. Now besides, who wants to live in a kingdom that prior to Louis III was run by his father, who was named Louis the Stammerer? And Louis the Stammerer, after giving birth to Louis III, took his second wife and gave birth to a child named Charles the Simple. Now, I'm sorry, that was probably a little too harsh. Let's go ahead and use his name and title that was given to him by historians in the year 919. Charles the Stupid. This whole West Francia place was just cursed with goofy caricatures of leaders flaunting their positions of power. <laughs> it's funny how little things change, isn't it? Basil isn't just a wonderful spice you'll use when you steal recipes from Reddit because you don't know how to cook. It's also the name of a Byzantine emperor who underestimated the raw fury of Mother Nature. Besides turning on lonely hunters, deer specialize in being strong as fuck when pissed off. Basil messed with a particularly swole one that probably didn't even notice that it had ended his life when it did. Because being the smartest creature ever doesn't matter when Mother Nature is trying its best to test how durable your bones are. While on a hunt to prove what a total badass he was for using our stupid human tools and intellect to tackle the wilderness, Basil got his belt tied up in a deer's antlers, and that deer proceeded to drag him for six teen miles through the woods, presumably because the deer's motto was, you humans make houses, I clear rooms. Now, you could wrap this whole story up into a strong ploy for veganism, but I love the combination of sushi and not suffering from muscle mass deficiency to even consider such a thing. Sigurd Eistensen, whose name I'm probably saying wrong, but he had one similar to the guy who wrote Goosebumps, was also better known by his American Natural Bodybuilding Federation approved title of Sigurd the Mighty. And he was also the Earl of Orkney, which was the chain, or is, the chain of islands in Northeast Scotland. In about the year 892, Sigurd wanted to challenge another Norse warrior named Mael Brigte the Bucktooth to a 40 on 40 battle to decide who was more badass. Now, aside from spit roasting his dentist on a stake for even suggesting that he give Invisalign a shot, Mael was a huge fan of fighting fair and following all the rules. So after being issued this challenge, he said to Sigurd, do you promise it'll be a 40 on 40 brawl? And Sigurd said, yes, I promise. And Mael replied, 
Do you mean it? And Sigurd replied, yes, I mean it. Then Mail stuck out his pinky and said, pinky promise? And Sigurd wrapped his pinky around Mail's and said, I pinky promise. Okay, said Mail, we can have a 40 on 40 brawl to decide who's tougher. Great, said Sigurd. And then Sigurd proceeded to bring over 80 men to the 40 on 40 brawl and slaughtered the ever loving shit out of every person in Mail's army. Sigurd was quite proud of himself after that one. After all, it's not every day you get a completely effortless victory thanks to being a completely spineless coward. So he cut Mail's head off and tied it to his horse's saddle. He rode around everywhere for a while going, nya, 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 nya. I'm the coolest guy ever. I killed Mail the fuck toothed. I'm being a jerk and nobody can stop me. But it was then that the ghost of Mail possessed his old decomposing head and whispered to Sigurd, I told you you shouldn't have cheated, bitch. Now the funny thing about horses is they tend to be a bit of a bumpy ride. Just ask your mother about the size of a cowboy's nuts compared to a regular client's. Swelling down there is regular. Mail's head bounced up and down as Sigurd rode his horse, and his handsome buck tooth chompers scratched into Sigurd's leg. Now it turns out the dead festering heads aren't exactly clean, because Sigurd's leg got infected, and Sigurd died of sepsis. I'd say the lesson here is to not cheat, but more accurately it's to not fuck around with corpses. We'd probably all today be eating Sigurd the Mighty Breakfast Cereal if that idiot remembered to shower regularly. Edmund Ironside was the King of England in 1016, and in 1016 he died taking a shit. There's some historical debate on specifically how he died while building a chocolate fudge cake, but the specific fact is that his sphincter was just as exposed as he was when he died on the toilet. There's currently two different explanations as to how he died as he went in historical texts. The first is that the combination of wounds and diseases that he suffered from battle, combined with the strain that he put on his body pushing out a fat log, caused him to expire. But the second explanation says that he was stabbed to death by an assassin who waited under his toilet toilet while he catapulted a squirt load straight to Latrineville. Now I'm not sure what's more horrifying about that story. The fact that the assassin's 2020 vision was ultimately clouded by Royal Dookie, or that the first place his blade ended up was probably riding the King's Hershey Highway. Either way, who knew that shit metaphors would bring out some of my best writing yet? God bless you, Edmund Ironside. Oh, and speaking of poopy juice, sure would suck to drown in that stuff, wouldn't it? Well, let's ask the victims of the Erfurt Latrine disaster. Except you can't, because they all drowned in poopy juice. I now have the unfortunate duty of explaining the context of this incident to all you nerds watching who care about historical factoids, myself included, but I'm gonna throw in the towel on this one because nothing I say at this point is gonna be remotely as interesting as the lead up of, and then they drowned in poopy juice. But let's hang on, maybe this will be interesting, okay? Two big dorks named Louis the Pious and Conrad of Minitz had been feuding for a very long time. And they were fighting over dumb stuff, it really doesn't matter. But they were beefing it so bad that King Henry VI was forced to step in and tell him to knock it the fuck off. Henry thought it'd be a good idea to get a shitload of noblemen from the Holy Roman Empire together to discuss how they could put an end to this dick measuring contest, especially since both sides had already lost to Hugbees in a landslide. On July 26th, 1184, a meeting was held for all these fancy people in a church to shout out their differences. But before anyone could even stand up to recite the Pledge of Allegiance, Allegiance, the wooden floor of the church broke and sent most of the congregation plummeting downstairs. Now, the thing about this church is that it had been built over a rather large latrine in the cellar, and about 60 people ended up plunging into the shit waters below where they, and let's all say it together, drowned in poopy juice. King Henry VI actually survived the whole thing, and was only said to have done so because he sat in a little stone alcove that held up when the floor collapsed. Now, Henry VI would later die in a jail cell after most likely being murdered by some opponents to his throne, and we do have his last words recorded on record, which I thought would be good for the last words video, but I forgot to include it, so we'll include it here. He said, Thank God I didn't die by drowning in poopy juice. Edward II of England has a very funny tale of his demise. It begins with the fact that if you take the image they use for his Wikipedia article, which is this one here on screen now, and then you squint your eyes while looking at it, he looks just like a Dark Souls boss. But where the whole tale ends is in his rear end. Don't blame me for the fact history is obsessed with pooping, by the way. 
if the political manifesto everybody poops has taught you anything, it's that world leaders might occasionally use the toilet. So this next one is a rumor. And in fact, as history has gone on, more and more historians believe that this never happened. But it's my duty to please that booty, even if it happens to be your knowledge booty stored up in your butt brain. Now, if you happen to be under the age of 18 watching this video, ignore that joke entirely. If you're over 18, I unfortunately from this video onward will only be sending out information to people with personal content posted to their OnlyFans accounts who then link it to me. So go ahead and be ready for a fat load of my knowledge all over you. Now, allegedly, King Edward II of England died by having a red hot iron shoved up his asshole so he could die without leaving a mark on his body. Did you, did you take that horrible shit in? Okay, let's talk about why thankfully it probably never happened. Edward II was kind of a wimp. And most people remember him for being a loser. He was just like the Detroit Lions. All he did was lose battles and rack up a shitty reputation. His wife and her lover, after celebrating the successful invention of cuckoldry porn, kicked him off the throne and put him in jail for a year before he died. They fucked with him pretty good. They'd starve him, they'd put him in a room with rotting corpses, they'd force him to watch Tyler Perry movies, all the tortures you would expect in a dungeon. But the actual prevailing theory is that this fun staycation didn't end in his death via cauterized prostate exam. Instead, Edward was able to flee England and lived out the rest of his days in exile, dying sometime shortly after that. And that makes the most sense when you consider the circumstances of his sodomizing slaughter. If you want to make something inconspicuous, like, you know, not leaving a mark on someone you kill, why would you not just use poison or something similar? It'd be pretty hard to shove a 600-something degree rod into someone's brown slide without there being some sort of a struggle. And that doesn't even take into account the fact that he probably screamed like a banshee while the whole thing was going on. That would give a pretty high chance that someone not privy to the penetrative death procedure would hear the whole thing going on. So why did this rumor start? There's a few prevailing theories. One of the most interesting is that it's actually all a mistranslation. One of the original Latin historical texts mentioning the incident says it happened per caterium, which means via a branding iron, but that could easily be an age old typo for per catalem, which means via a trick. For all we know, it's equally likely that Edward was beheaded at a surprise birthday party from an exploding iPhone 7 compared to having a nuclear temperature girder jammed up his colon. Now, Another reasonable explanation is this was all started to make Edward look like an even bigger loser than he was. Now it turns out that Edward had a passing interest in homosexuality, and this whole thing could have been started as a way to make him look bad and communicate to the world, hey, check out this loser, he likes stuff up his ass, ha <laughs> ha, Now I'm sure some of you out there have a problem with the homophobia on display here, but don't worry, this was 1300s England. Everyone was homophobic, so it was okay. John of Bohemia was exactly like famous jazz musician Ray Charles in every single way. He was blind, and he was blind. By the time of his death, John was 50 years old and had been blind for over 10 years, but he had also been a badass for over 10,000 years, because he obviously spent the entirety of his first lives and subsequent reincarnations carrying on his tradition of being a big boy warrior. Now there was this little war called the Hundred Years War between England and France, and it was a super stupid war because it actually lasted for 116 years, but John of Bohemia fought in it regardless. During the Battle of Crecy, John spoke with some of his men, and historian Jean Froziart, whose name sounds like a failed Kellogg snack food, recorded the entire conversation. John asked, Bros, where the fuck is my son Charles? What the fuck is that bro doing? Then one of his men replied, Dude, bro, seriously? I've got no fucking idea, man. It's free Slurpee day at the 7-Eleven, so I was busy. He's, like, most likely out there, like, fighting in the war or, like, hitting 10th Prestige in Modern Warfare 2. And then John said, yo, bros, you guys are my bros, dog. So you think I'm gonna let you guys, like, and my son, like, fight my shit for me? 
Because just because I'm blind doesn't mean I'm not gangster, bro. You guys need to figure out how to get me in that throwdown, dog, because I just need to swing my sword a bit. No cap, for real. On John's command, his men tied him to his horse and then tied his horse's reins to their saddles. So that way, his horse would follow theirs as they charged into battle. By that time in the battle that this was happening, John's son Charles had already become a punk-ass bitch and retreated because he saw that this shit was going totally sideways. They were absolutely gonna lose. But John, staying true to his code of the streets, and also literally being blind so he couldn't see how bad this was going, charged into battle with his men and was instantly slaughtered. Okay, enough of me helping educate your children because you gave them a tablet and you did that instead of spending time with them because you're a bad parent. If you don't believe that John of Bohemia was a certified man's man and not a dumb old blind idiot, here's a direct actual quote from him before the battle that's been translated from the original Latin. Far be it that the king of Bohemia should run away. Instead, take me to the place where the noise of the battle is the loudest. The Lord will be with us. Nothing to fear. Just take good care care of my son. You know, sometimes you read about someone who just reminds you that you will never be as cool as them, so congratulations, John of Bohemia. America supports you. Okay, enough cool guys, let's get back to some idiots. Charles II of Navarre was an old-time king and a count who was given the nickname Charles the Bad because he constantly double-dipped his potato chips at the company party. Now, he did a whole bunch of nasty, scheming, playing both sides type shit during the 116-year war that I mentioned earlier, and many people think what happened to him is karmic justice. Now, I'll let you decide because I don't judge people, I just laugh at their failure. At around 60 years old, Charles was a disgraced king by this point in his life, and he was so riddled with disease and old person bullshit that he couldn't even move his limbs. He asked his doctor what he should do about his absolute lack of mobility and his high amount of laziness, and his doctor replied, oh, you seem to be suffering from a case of Americanitis. Okay, look, Charles, here's what you do. Here's what you do. You take some linen clothes and you wrap them all around you and you make sure you sew yourself into them like a sack. Now you douse those clothes with brandy and you just soak that shit in and that should cure whatever the hell's going on with you. Now modern medicine has come a really, really long way and for that I'm eternally grateful. While the exact details of what happened next are unknown, the large pieces of the story remain the same in all retellings. Charles the Bad laid in bed and had one of his servants sew him up in the linens, which were soaked with brandy. At this point, a lit candle in the room made contact with his booze-soaked bedspread and immediately lit him on fire. Some accounts say he was burned to death on the spot, while others say that he was put out and suffered through his burns for another two weeks before he died. But my account says that he probably died thinking that soaking in an alcohol bath would have cured him of his full body paralysis, and I think that's the funniest part of all. And finally, Martin of Aragon. Martin of Aragon was a king of a shitload of different places in the early 1400s. Martin was doing his big old king shit one day. He was eating, laughing, probably being fat and worthless. And he had gotten a wicked righteous tummy ache from eating an entire goose. He called his favorite jester, Bora, into his bedroom to help him recite scripts from his favorite episodes of Seinfeld, because that always cheered him up. Martin asked Bora where he was and what took him so long getting there. And Bora replied, in the next vineyard, where I saw a young deer hanging by his tail from a tree, as if someone had punished him for stealing figs. Martin then laughed so hard that he died. Now this is the perfect setup and conclusion to reference my previous video, which I'll link in the description if you haven't seen it. I know you all have, but just in case. In it, I told the story of Chrysippus, the Greek philosopher who died of laughter after witnessing a donkey eating figs and remarking that someone should bring the donkey some good wine to wash it down. Now in that video, I had a good chuckle over the fact that it's really a hilarious joke, but somehow most of you don't understand and don't see why a donkey eating figs and then being brought expensive wine is hysterical. So I'll go ahead and explain it. You see, there's a huge misconception that the joke is based on the fact that figs in ancient Greece were an expensive luxury item like caviar is today, and that watching a donkey eat them is like wasting high-end product and treating a farm animal like royalty. It's quite the absurdist scenario, but it's not what makes the joke funny. Now, there's also many other interpretations, such as Chrysippus had just come back from a party and was drunk, so he likened the donkey to another party guest. Some also say that Chrysippus was a grumpy old man by this point, and he used the donkey as an allegory to insult his fellow fancy-schmancy noblemen. Even more lowbrow discussions 
mention how figs in ancient Greece were used as slang for vaginas, and watching an ass eat pussy is the funniest thing that the philosopher had ever seen in the world. There's other analysis that says that donkeys, figs, and wine were all symbols that were associated with the Greek god of revelry, Dionysus, and it's not as complicated or clever as you think. It's because they're ass, pussy, and booze. So Chrysippus saw two Dionysus symbols in the flesh and thought, hmm, some wine would complete this picture. There's even a second account that claims that old Crispy Lips didn't even die from laughing at all, but he said the joke while he was suffering from an overconsumption of wine from the party. Then he fell over dead after complaining that he was feeling a little dizzy. But none of those are the true reason the joke is funny. You're all very close. You're so very close, but none of you got it exactly right. But don't worry. I'll tell you. The reason a donkey eating figs is so funny. <laughs> okay. The reason a donkey eating figs <laughs> the reason <I> <laughs> <laughs> uh, never mind, you wouldn't get it.